All right, everybody. I'm uh, Jesse Terry, and this is Sam Grieven from Serato. Um, we're going to talk to you a little bit about the bridge. We've been talking to each other for quite a while now. And uh, over the years, we learned that uh, a lot of our customers were using uh, products from both of our companies. And we learned that they were using them in lots and lots of different ways. There were people who would be uh, producing tracks in Ableton Live and then performing them at a club at Scratch Live or Itch. There'd be people who were using Ableton Live to record or re-edit, master their mixtapes, uh, or people who were using Scratch Live to record um, cuts and scratches into their Ableton Live session. So, um, as Jesse said, we set about making it easier to use our products together. Um, and we started off with perhaps some of the obvious things, but over time we came up with some not so obvious things. Um, and the result was a very long list of possible projects and things that we could do together. Um, so we decided to focus on two of those things and uh, we'd like to uh, briefly introduce those to you right now. We're going to have a full demonstration um, after the press conference. So this is just going to be a, a quick view of those two things. Um, we are calling the first part of our collaboration the bridge. And you can cross the bridge in two ways. The first way is from Ableton to Serato. And what we're going to do, we have Nick here, we're going to give you a little demonstration. Oh, we do want to just load the screen up there. All right. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to look for a track in our library. Uh, the first part of this is called Ableton Transport Control. So um, this is the Ableton Live set. You can see the name of the set there. It's called Dance Loops Demo Set. Uh, and you can control this using the turntable. Throw some looping on that. And if you uh, switch over to Ableton Live, stop that and switch over. In the Ableton Live stream, you can see when you move the turntable, the track stops and starts playing. And if you switch back to Scratch Live, you can see that uh, instead of the standard waveform, we have a marker to indicate the beats and the bars. So um, it's, this is very cool, but we thought, uh, wouldn't it be great if you didn't have to switch between the two applications? So uh, what we've did is we've added this button here, the Ableton button that exposes the Ableton view. So what we have here is full control of Ableton Live from within the Scratch Live GUI. And you're also able to uh, load up another track, a regular MP3 or WAV file, uh, and then mix that in with the, with the Ableton Live set. This far, we thought, okay, that's that's pretty cool, but wouldn't it be even cooler if you didn't have to use up one of your virtual decks in Scratch Live uh, with the Ableton set? So, on the left-hand side here, uh, down in the Ableton view, you'll see the 
Ableton player and you're able to take that track, the Ableton track, and play it inside the Ableton player. Um, you can also use Ableton Live to play instruments over the top or drive, drop in lots and lots of samples. Yeah, so what we have now is the Ableton Live session synced to the MP3 that's playing on the right deck. So we're now playing an MP3 with Ableton Live synced over the top on one side and we can mix in a regular MP3 on the other side. So that's the first part. Um, the second part of crossing the bridge is the other way from Serato to Ableton. Uh, and what we can do is we can actually close down, able to close the Ableton view. And what we're going to do is just it's as simple as choosing save as ALS from the recording mix. So down the bottom there, you have ALS as one of the options. And what we can do now is record a little set. Loaded. Uh, there was some movement in the records. Uh, the crossfader was moved. Uh, and what you're going to see now is that we're going to find that recording. And load it up. In Ableton Live. And we're going to play it back. So that was the recording we just made, but instead of recording just regular audio, you'll notice that there are a few tracks here. The top track is everything that was played on the left turntable, and the bottom track is everything that was played on the right turntable. There's various bits of automation recording in here. Down at the bottom there, you see all the crossfader movement. So what that means is that you've made a fully non-destructive record of everything that you've done on the turntables. How about that, folks? <laughs> okay, so that's uh, a very, very quick overview of what we've done. As we said, we're going to be uh, going through this in more detail immediately after this, so please stick around. Thanks, Jesse. So